In this video, we're going to look at the text file that was used to produce the dot plot profile that we saw in the first video. This video takes up from that point. We have run dot plot using examples.txt and we click the run now button in order to do it. What we will now do instead is we're going to click the edit button which will allow us to edit the input file. Here we see the dot plot editor. I'm going to adjust it slightly so that it fits onto the video screen. This shows us the structure of a typical dot plot text file. There's quite a lot of explanation which we can ignore. The piece we're interested in is firstly the title block which I've highlighted for you. Here we have a series of keywords such as client, job title, job number, typed by and so on, followed by a colon. The colon is important because that tells it that there is a keyword in this line and it will look at everything before the colon for the keyword. After the keyword comes the data to be used for that particular block in the title block. So when we run the program, we will see that the client is program.plot, the job title is demonstration of combinations of various symbols. If we look at the PDF file that was produced, this is what it looks like. We will see program.plot at the top, and then underneath it, demonstration of combination of various symbols as the client. We will see the use of a backslash there in order to force a new line. The job number is manual which we will see appears there and further down the whole number dim001 appears in the title block on the top right. The remaining items will appear at the bottom of the page. We will see things here like the machine, which corresponds to drilling machine over here. We will see things like the inclination, the diameter, who profiled it, when it was done, and so on. The title block ends with a single line with a single slash, a forward slash, on that line. That tells dot plot that this is the end of the title block and the start of the profile block. The profile block is very simple. It consists of a series of depths to the bottom of the layer, followed by a description of that particular layer. We'll see various things done here. For example, an underscore is used to give us an underscored description. If we scroll up to the top again in what was done there, we will see reddish brown is underlined, corresponding to the underscore before reddish brown there. For caps, you simply put in caps. So we'll see sand in caps and sand in caps there. We'll see the use of a backslash again for a new line. The symbols will be automatically picked up from the text. The program will have noticed that clay is in its vocabulary, sand is in its vocabulary, and consequently it gives us a clay sand as the first layer. Good morning, and so on down. You'll notice that if we want to continue the text, all we do is we indent by at least four characters, four spaces, at the beginning of the line. I have absolutely no interest in putting our company details on the screen. 
the program will recognize both a full stop and a comma as a decimal. And for the very lowest layer, we can have the previous one with a plus, which indicates that the rock goes down below where the profile ends. And we will see that over here at the very bottom of the profile. The profile block containing the descriptions ends again with a line containing a single forward slash. That's the end of the second block. The third block is the notes block and that contains the notes which appear at the bottom of the profile. They are numbered automatically as you can see. And they contain keywords like water table, which will produce for us a water table, as shown in this symbol on the left, with the correct depth. A perched water table, which appears in the second note here, and that appears at the appropriate depth, in this case higher up. chemical samples here's our chemical sample undisturbed samples if the word undisturbed does not appear it's assumed to be undisturbed and that the undisturbed samples appear here disturbed sample Notice that it will also pick up the name of the sample, as here. And in this case, this sample has a range of depths, as given here, with two dashes in between the starting and the finishing depth. The hole ends with a line containing two forward slashes, and then we can repeat the process for the next hole, the profile. Again, a title box, a single forward slash, the descriptions for the profile, a single forward slash, and two forward slashes to end the hole. Finally, at the very end of the file, we show that all the holes end, by putting in a line with three forward slashes. After that we can put in anything we like and the program will ignore it. That is the Hotplot text editor containing the text file that we used to produce the PDF file. Very simple. When we close that, if we made any changes it will ask to save it and we will be back at the Hotplot window.